the Anesty ZD915 desoldering station. This thing has been a workhorse for me for going on two years now. Let's see here in 2023 what modifications can be done to get the most out of this budget solution. So I've been using this cheap Anesty ZD915 desoldering station for a year or two now and it's been pretty reliable. I've had one bad clog and other than that it's worked great. There's things you can do to alleviate clogging and some more modifications that I would suggest. And I'm going to be going through doing some maintenance on this thing today. So I figured why not make a video about it. Maybe it'll help some others out. Uh, one of the first things I can say. This is the old style gun. I don't think they're being sold with this style anymore. If you do have one of these, they're really a pain in the ass. And I, I kind of covered the modifications I did in another video. But basically, there's a mechanism in here that keeps it from going back far enough to be able to easily get that tube out. I'm not going to cover the mod because, honestly, there's a much better way. And it's only about $28 shipped. I spent hours looking for a replacement gun for the ZD915. And AliExpress is dry. But I kept hearing mention of a company, a company named MPJA, that I kept seeing mentioned in the Amazon comments for this Anesty desoldering station. And that company was said to have uh, all the replacement parts you need. So I went to their website and I looked and they had a replacement desoldering gun. It was only like 20, 25 bucks. But the picture is of the old style and I wasn't sure which one I was getting. I know my buddy Mike bought this Anesty, the same kit I got off Amazon and his came with this new gun. And that is what I received from this MPJA. So for 28 bucks, you get the new style gun with the improved glass tube clean out. Uh, locking mechanism it's got the six pin connector which is what we need for this Anesty ZD915 because all the new style guns that, that you see on AliExpress have a seven pin connector so this is the new style gun with the six pin connector for these old ZD915s so I would highly recommend to grab one of these while you can. They're dirt cheap and they fix a lot of issues the original gun had. Another mod I'm gonna do is to improve the cooling capability and cut out this restrictive fan grill. And more importantly, I've been meaning to do this for a year or so, but we're gonna install this 12 volt butt converter or step down converter comes with a little heat sink this thing here will greatly improve the efficiency of the 12 volt source fed to that pump motor and more importantly we can give that exhaust fan the right voltage these units run off an 18 volt power supply and you have two resistors that are used to just step that voltage down to 12 volts the problem is your fan is constantly running at 18 volts and that's major source of all the noise in these units so we can get these voltages all straightened down and we can actually overdrive that vacuum pump motor a little bit if we want to and get a little better suction power out of this thing so there you've seen I removed the two screws on either side and four on top. We got the housing off and here's a look at the inner workings. This little black box back here is what houses that board with the, the step down resistors. We got two screws. Go ahead and remove those and we'll pull that box out. 
and I have a look at uh, the little rigged up voltage divider setup that they have in these. We'll also pull this fan out and you can see right there, 12 volt. Now I read in forums that this Chinese metal is uh, butter soft and that you can just snip all the way around to remove that intersection of that grill but I can tell you right now mine was heavy gauge stamped steel and I had to use these heavy duty wire cutters and put a lot of ass into it and it was pretty messy so I would suggest covering up all your internals but once I got it out you could hit that with a file and leave it you're never gonna look at the back of this unit but uh, my OCD got the better of me and I took it outside and hit it with a Dremel. Smooth it up. Yeah, I screwed the paint up a little bit. Fuck it. Now I've seen other people that modify these units. Uh, they install that fan with the vanes pointing outward which would extract the hot air from the case. And that might be the better way of cooling it. But I'm gonna install it like this because that's the way it was installed from the factory and I want to make sure that motor stays cool so I'm putting faith that the engineers of this knew what they were doing but if we turn this voltmeter on here and power this unit up I can show you that the fan is being overdriven and while idling it's pulling 18 volts so now I'm gonna get some test leads onto that motor and we'll test it in the stock configuration. 11.8 volts, unrestricted. Wow, almost 15 volts, 14.7 with full restriction. Now this little housing for that uh, voltage divider it's got these two little ears that clip on either side, but I could not for the life of me get the housing undone. So I'm just snipping those little things off so we can get inside. And that's all we have in here is two large resistors that drop the voltage from 18 to 12 volts when you uh, pull the trigger on that gun. Not very efficient and that should create a lot of heat too. So it's buck converter should be a nice little modification here I'm just using that housing to hold that connector while I probe it for voltages we got a negative 18 there so we know that the positive is the black lead here I'm just showing you that I'm visually following the trace that that black lead is on to find which two wires in those connectors are the positives. And here we have our step down converter, or our buck converter. And we're gonna feed it 18 volts on that left side and we'll tie in the positives and the negatives of the fan and the pump motor on the right. And it fits perfectly in that little resistor board housing. I had to snip out a little bit on the sides there for the leads to come through. I'm um, reading the reviews on these little buck converters. I've read they get pretty hot, so make sure to install your heat sink. So another quick and free little modification is to remove these bottom four screws that hold in the power supply unit. And once it's out, we can remove the metal shielding around the unit so that that unrestricted airflow that we're adding can easily pass across those components and keep that power supply cool which should uh, ensure longevity if you fish in your screwdriver at that bottom slot you'll be able to uh, back that nut off the bottom there's a screw on the bottom and the top that secures that, that metal shielding on. Or so I thought. 
once uh, you get those off, you can just start peeling back that shielding. But then I found out there was more tabs uh, at the bottom of the unit, so I end up having to pull off the bottom plate from that power supply unit. See, at this point, it's free to come out, but there was still a couple tabs held in by screws at the bottom. So there's three screws that hold the bottom floor of that whole unit on. Just remove those, and that uh, shielding is free to come out of there. And you can go ahead and reinstall the floor of that power supply unit reinsert it back into the housing make sure to get that black lead to that button along the outside and also our earth grounds get reattached at the top so insert your four screws re-secure it to the housing and make sure to reattach your earth grounds here's a little close-up look-see I reflowed those connectors because they were a little spotty looking. And I put on those standoffs and I drilled out two holes at the top. It's where I will secure that converter to that housing from the back with these screws I had. And I decided instead of using those terminal blocks at the top to just directly solder all the leads on the bottom of the board, those terminal blocks they they weren't very secure even tightened all the way down I was easily able to rip them out and I just I don't trust that they could cause issues down the road it could cause arcing and a loose lead that could make its way into the power supply and cause a fire so I just hard soldered them to the back and I feel better about it we're just reinstalling our fan And here you can see there was not a lot of slack in that one um, lead there that goes from the front, but it was enough to reattach that, that housing to the back plate in its original position. You can see as I flex it, there's just barely enough slack in it. I taped those fan wires above that converter and you can access that left button from the left side and that right button if you get your finger back there. It's not a, the perfect location, but it will work. We're not gonna be adjusting this thing all the damn time. So that left button just turns the display on and off. The right button will switch between Showing your input, input voltage and your output voltage. This is how you adjust your output voltage. Now, as I adjust this, I can hear that fan quieting down. So it's at 12.8. See what happens. improvement the fan don't bog down that uh, vacuum motor is that's it's just instantaneous power and what did we run before 11.8 I think we'll even bump it up till we're getting about 12 and a half should give a nice little boost to performance. Alright, so there we have 13 volts. Maybe we'll do 13.5. Thirteen 
five. That was wide open. Let me plug the vacuum port and see what we get. Well, that that's actually better. Right there is where I'll leave it. We started off with 11.8. Um, the vacuum open, and now we're getting about a volt more. And then restricted, we went from 14.7 volts to only 13.1. So that's probably where I'll leave it for now. We'll see how that does. So like I mentioned, this desoldering kit is still available on Amazon by Anesty. It ships with the new style gun. Some more pointers is you can use a cotton ball on the main filter unit and inside the glass tube if you use the brass solder tip cleaner. I use that on top of a little wad of ceramic wool and that will save you, you know, tons of money on changing those filters all the time. All right, to wrap things up, here we are in the stock configuration. And here we are with the modified step down converter and about one volt of extra voltage to that pump motor. Let's see them again back to back. So I will put this modded ZD915 through its paces. I have a PVM2030 and a PVM2530 that I need to do recaps on soon. Uh, shout out to Mike and Eric. And uh, Mike also loaded me up with a ton of NESs to work on. And a second BTM1950 Panasonic, which I'm pretty excited to work on because out of all the dozens of tubes I own, that is the Shining Star up by 240p 15 kilohertz tubes but that's gonna wrap up this video as always don't forget to like and subscribe